Hey there. Um, thanks for joining us today here. I'm super excited to show you this new uh, guitar that just came together um, this morning, actually, like uh, just an hour ago. I just finished uh, soldering the electronics. Um, so we'll do things a little differently today. We'll have a, a list of how it sounds first, and then we'll talk about the specs and the materials and all that stuff. Um, yeah, here we go. Let's have a listen. This is just the neck pickup here alone. darken quite a bit. This is uh, what this guitar sounds like. Uh, so we'll go through some of the materials and the specs here and um, the components as well. Um, so this one came together at the same time as uh, number 10 that we just saw the other day. Um, so it's the same body, same uh, altar construction as well. The drop horn is there as well. Um, but there was a few little differences. Uh, for one, I didn't do the camber on the neck like I did on the other ones. So the neck, the top of the neck, the fretboard's in plane with the top of the, of the body. Whereas on the other one, it's got a bit of a camber, so it's a bit closer to your the player. But um, this is still super comfortable, comfortable and very easy to play. It does have the roundovers on the front for your arm, the roundover on the back for your body. 
It has the reduced uh, neck joint as well. Uh, and then the drop point as well. So that just means it's a lot easier to get up there. There's nothing really to get in your way. So playing up top is really easy, I find. Um, like I said, there's an alder body, two-piece alder body. Uh, there's a coral colored milk paint on here with an opaque kind of application. So that's like six or seven uh, layers and then sand it down to something level. And then there's poly on top of that and wax after to kind of buff it all out. Um, I use some set, some um, steel wool to kind of give it a bit of a, a satin finish, which is what I prefer. Uh, I don't like super glossy finishes. Uh, and that's where, that's where this guitar is right now. It's very satiny, feels really good. Uh, so that's the body. For the neck, we have roasted maple neck and a granadillo fingerboard. And there's boiled linseed oil on everything here. Uh, and it just feels super good. Like I'm, I'm never gonna go back to anything else. I don't think that's that's a great, great finish for the neck. Um, I forgot to mention that the neck, mm, the neck transition from like thinner to neck heel or neck joint here is quite abrupt. Uh, so it means it's a lot flatter up here compared to this one here. I'm not sure which one I like yet. This one is very uh, smooth transition. So it goes like just kind of tapers off very smoothly up here. Whereas this one's very abrupt, kind of like this one here. I'm not sure what I like yet. I kind of like them both. Um, but yeah, I find like every neck profile I try on these guitars, on a tenor guitar, I fall in love with because they're just so easy to play. Um, yeah, and they're, they really fit my hand quite well. Um, so that's the neck. That's, sorry, that's the neck. <laughs> and this is the body. Um, so for the specs, the scale length is 22 and a half inches long or 574 millimeters, 574. Uh, there's a 9.5 inch radius on the fretboard. So it's got a very rounded fretboard, uh, which I really love. It gives it a bit more of a violin kind of feel and it just works. I don't know. I don't know if I do it on bigger guitars or basses or anything, but it, it's, it's great here. Um, and yeah, 22 frets to the body on this one, 22 frets here. And let's go look at the components here. So we have the Goto tuning heads here. These are great. We got a roller kind of string saddle, string tree here. That moves, so it's nice. We've got a truss rod all the way through. It's adjusted now. Um, I don't expect to ever use the truss rod on this one because of the roasted maple and just the nature of only having four strings that don't really pull on the neck that much. Um, I find I never need to use the truss rod on any of my guitars, but you know, maybe if you travel to like all across the world, you want to have that truss rod in place there to be able to make those adjustments. But so far it doesn't really need it. We have a bone nut here, just a bleached bone. That's pretty standard. Sounds great though. I love it. Uh, and then we have these inlays that are connecting the fret marks on the front, the fret markers on the side here. And there's also a little peekaboo fret markers on the back there because I have some extra ones. I was totally playing around a little bit. Um, and then there's three stainless steel screws and countersunk washers that hold the neck to the body. Um, these are number 10, so they're nice and beefy. That neck's not going anywhere. And the three, three screws is enough to hold it all together. Um, so for the components, um, I'm using DeVille pickups on this one here. So these are just like normal mini humbuckers, but not mini humbuckers. Um, they're wound fairly hot at like seven or eight, depends on the, I think this is 7.5 and this is eight. Uh, so it's pretty hot, but it's not as hot as the fiber pickups. So it's still nice and even all around, but there's a good presence in the mids that I like a lot. Um, and there's also the wiring for going in and co doing some coil taps or anything like that. Any different wirings that you want to do. Uh, I just like the three-way switch, like a classic telly. That's more than enough for me. Um, honestly, I live probably 90% of the time I live on this pickup <laughs> with the tone all the way up and the volume all the way up. And that's where I do 90% of my work. So as long as this sounds good, I'm happy. And it, it sounds really great on this one. Um, uh, but you know, your mileage may vary with that. So there's options for different wiring. I'm using a fifties Les Paul style wiring here. Um, yeah, it just kind of opens up the sound a little bit more. I find it's been, there's more distinction between the notes. Not that it's really lacking without it, but there's just even more uh, when I have that on. I'm not even using a compressor now to differentiate all the notes, but imagine if I had a nice compressor on here to just be like, 
super easy to hear all of the notes, which is great. Definition is super, super important, I find. Uh, I changed the three-way switch. I tried using these ones here for a little while, you know, the ones with the, the spring on it, um, like the old Grigsby's or the CRL's, or these are the DM vintage style Japanese three-way switch. Uh, I just found the middle position was um, very intermittent and these the lugs or like the the spring clips that hold the that make the contact just weren't great good enough so um, I had to let go of them so I'm using these import style ones again they don't feel quite as good but the middle position is not intermittent so I can live with that they're a little higher as well than this one's a little lower profile which I like this one's higher whatever be nice to have it lower but what can you do I guess you could chop it down yeah maybe that's a project for another day <laughs> anyway that's the switch that I'm using now for this one uh, we have two Borns potentiometers in here uh, they're nice super chunky feeling they're really they get a nice resistance to them and I get these um, knurled uh, chrome dome tops uh, knobs with like the little uh, allen key adjustment on it so they can come off quite easily uh, if you want to change that out uh, and there's a Solon capacitor in there, a 0 0.022 capacitor. Um, it's dark enough. Um, and then we have a pure tone output jack here. This is just a lifetime jack. No question about it. I'm so happy with those ones. Um, and then there's just two um, strap pins. So yeah, that's it. That's it for this one. Let's have another little jam here and then we'll, uh, we'll say goodbye after that. Uh, this is another song from uh, Beach House. Sorry about that. Uh, well, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.